Hello, you're very welcome along to another episode and a bonus episode of the Talking Sport Podcast. And it's Daniel Hussey here once again. And I'm going to take a look at day two of the Cheltenham Festival. So you don't have to, essentially. Uh, those that looked at day one will probably have a quick review in about a minute. But like appreciate it was unbelievable and supreme. That was brilliant. Disappointing. Franco de Porte, definitely not a two-miler. Milan Native also was disappointing in the Ultima. Honeysuckle, she was class. Absolutely unbelievable. Delighted. Um, a bit emotional watching that race, actually. And, Delighted for Rachel and Henry de Bromhead as well. It was possibly one of the best champion hurdle performances I've ever witnessed. Concertista losing in the mares. Um, I'm still not over, to be honest with you. Uh, I still don't know how she got beat. I went for a bit of a walk afterwards. Uh, I would highly recommend. St. Sam, another beat, not second. Um, yeah, bit of the second itis back-to-back. It's tough to take, to be honest with you. He, Paul Turner thought he gave him a good ride. He just beat him by an 80 to one shot. These things happen. And then finally remastered. The ground is quick enough throughout the day. And I think that went against him. I'm surprised he, he probably went as gone as fast as he could. I'm surprised he didn't increase the pace of the national on chase, but I guess he was probably gone as fast as he could. But Gavin was a deserved winner. Fair play to him. So yeah, probably mixed, I guess. I was going pretty well until Concertista got shinned and then back to back seconds. But I'm over that, uh, as you can probably tell. But let's move on to day two which is all that you're here for. And the first race, the Ballymore Novices Hurdle. I flip-flopped on this race with all three uh, horses at the top of the market. I've been a Brave Man's Game fan, then it was Bob Ollinger, and now I'm going to side with Gallier de Menil. And the reason is he does bring good form to the table after beating his stable mate Statler in the Dublin Racing Festival. Um, Statler actually runs in the Albert Barda later on in the week, and we, we something I touched upon in the podcast, if anyone's into those relatable doubles, no, I wouldn't put anyone off having a couple of quid double on the two horses because Gallier de Mille holds up that form uh, tomorrow. Statler will go off a lot shorter in the, in the Albert Barlet. So for me, uh, Gallier de Mille is a strong fancy. And I think five to two is a good price because Bob Ollinger is kind of priced up based on what Jamie Codd said in a, in a, at the race's preview. Uh, he's been shorting a lot on the basis of that and a lot of public money. But Gallier de Mille for me. Next race, the 155 is the Brown Advisory Novices Chase. I won't spend too long on this race. I need to say Monkfish wins. Uh, enjoy watching the race uh, sometimes I force the without favourite markets and look for a bet so I'm actually just going to leave this one alone and watch Monkfish um, incredible race horse and next year's Gold Cup winner fingers crossed on to the Carl Cup uh, it's one of the most competitive handicaps at Cheltenham and it's, it's one thing to say like Wednesday is a kind of a little bit more competitive than Tuesday so be careful with the betting but Grand Rock Cup is a horse that could be ahead of his mark uh, here after his second to back us on in the limestone lad hurdle back in January. He's my tentative selection. I know he's near the top of the mark and close to favourite, but for me, Grand Rock, I give him a good shout in the Carl Cup. But again, very tough race to, to pick out. Now, the strongest fancy today is in the Queen Mother Champion Chase, and it isn't Shaq and Porsois, and I'm not completely losing my marbles. He's an incredible race horse. He is obviously the most likely winner. That's not what I'm saying. I just think his price is a little bit short for a horse that hasn't run in Cheltenham before, albeit he obviously hasn't had the opportunity. But still, where I'm going to go for a horse here that's won three out of three at Cheltenham, including last year's article, and it's put the kettle on. And I think she's a mare that it's a cliche in terms of like, this horse loves Cheltenham, but this horse and this mare loves Cheltenham. It's simple as, and I think she'll go off second favourite. I actually see there's money coming for her already. I was expecting that to maybe happen later on but the good ground is drying out and she actually prefers good ground i know last year she won off soft in the article but she actually she i think she really uh, prefers good ground so for me i think she's a cracking each way bet now each way because i do think shack and will take all the beating but we've seen shocks in this in this race before it's a funny old track and in the article which is which is on the same track so expect her i think she'll run her race to this level for those not watching on youtube i'm kind of raising the hand here and if shack better than that which he probably is that's fair enough but I, I really think she'll run a really good race for Put the Kettle On and Henry de Bromheads is our, our obviously in form as well. Right, 340 cross country chase. If you asked me a week ago if I'd be tipping this horse, I'd kind of laugh at you. But here I am. Like, Easy's Land is the short price favorite here, but I have enough concerns about the ground and it's the, the fact it's drying out. Bearing that in mind, and if Easy's Land underperforms because he did underperform um, at Cheltenham earlier on in the season. He under the performs and the, 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 the rides have been great on Easy's lands, to be honest with you. It's a favourite I'll be staying away from. Like Tiger Roll, I know he was beaten, I think, 22 lengths in last year's cross country. And I know he's not the horse he was, but you take Easy's land out of last year's cross country, he absolutely wins by a mile. If Easy's land underperforms, which is my kind of angle, I do expect Tiger Roll to be well clear of this now. I know I've, I've, I've had a great relationship with Tiger Roll down the years. He's won me enough money. So there may be a small bit of bias coming into that, but yeah, it's a tentative selection on this race. Not a race I'm massively involved, but I will go for Tiger Earl and I will have a few quid on him. 
Grand Annual, a uh, horse I'm pretty sweet on, and it's been tipped up in a lot of places, is the uh, Zanza in the Grand Annual. He's a horse that could be very well handicapped. He was actually running a big race at Cheltenham um, earlier on the season, back in December, in a race subsequently won by Sky Pirate um, when he fell three out. And Sky Pirate's put up £11 pounds for that win, whereas Zanza stayed off, staying off the better mark, and the better ground should be no issue to this horse. So I know, despite the fact he was about to run a, a big race last time, his Cheltenham record isn't too great, but I think he's severe like really really well handicapped and i saw do a lot of judges there so but for me as anza i think he could go very well in the grand annual and he's about seven one the mark i still think that's a good shit uh, but champion bumper uh, we covered this a few weeks ago on the tackling sport podcast and it was between kilcrot and sarah gerhard in terms of the top of the market for me like while these two those two horses will go on and i'm fairly sure of it go on to be incredible race horses the champion bumper is a funny race and at the prizes, I'm going to take the, the two of them on at the top of the market with Tree Stripe Life, who's only had one run uh, and one bumper this season, but it was a very, very impressive uh, win at Navin, and he holds actually holds the top speed figures here of this field. And I just think at the prizes, 8-1, to one, I think it's worth taking a chance on Tree Stripe Life in the champion bumper. So final selections then, 120, Gallier de Manil, 5-2 mark, uh, Monkfish, but I'll be watching brief for me, Grand Rat in the Carl Cup, put the kettle on each way, she's my nap. Tiger Roll at about the five to one mark, Zanza at seven to one, and Tree Stripe Live eight to one. And if anyone's a double or anything, my double today, uh, we almost landed the treble there in Punta the Arena, but Concertita's Tista broke our hearts. Is uh, the double is put the kettle on, and Gallier de Manil will be my two strongest fancies of the day. So I think, to be honest with you, I think Thursday have more stronger fancies, but um, I'll, yeah, I'll be confident in all those selections. Hopefully, a few of them go run, run well. Um, if you like the video, um, we really appreciate just giving us the like, or if you subscribe to the channel. Um, we, sh- we should have one of these up every day and this will be out in podcast form um, as well so on wherever you get your podcasts but um, yeah check us out at Tackling Sports social media and more importantly enjoy the racing tomorrow and thanks for listening